Ed DeRosa from Horse Racing Nation, back with you on pre-entry day, ready to dish with the prince himself, the paddock prince, four days to go at Keeneland Prince, and you're still boasting a positive ROI. Did uh, you give yourself uh, a pep talk going into the final week to get it done? Yeah, we're hanging in there at about two twenty-seven, two dollars twenty-seven cents. We got four days left. Should be some good racing. The first couple of cards of the week so far I've done have been been pretty solid. A lot of the turf fields are very deep, obviously, because Churchill's only going to be running. I think what it's like one to two turf races, one a day right. maybe well, or something after the first. Keeneland's been only running one a day uh, a few days this week. I did notice that. Two. Probably get three and yeah. a closing day would be my guess. Uh, but that all does go to Churchill, which opens Sunday. Very uh, unique schedule in the Bluegrass when the Breeders' Cup's at Keeneland. Churchill opens Sunday. They'll race Wednesday and Thursday. Back to Keeneland for Breeders' Cup. And then Churchill on Sunday after the Breeders' Cup, plus all the sales going on. So plenty of racing action here. But did want to ask you about Churchill because it stars at tomorrow card. Of course, Horse Racing Nation has those power ratings for the debut runners. Very useful on Sunday. You need to get your work done before those even come out, though. How do you handicap the two-year-old races? Yeah, it's 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 fun. It's interesting. It can, can obviously be tough because of the random results that can happen. I'm sure the fields will be 10, 12 deep in every race. <laughs> couple stakes races, so, you know, preps for the stakes races at the end of the meet for derby points. Um you know, I just the track it's opening day, so won't be any track trends going on yet. But just kind of handicap the way I normally do, and I'm sure all the big barns will be out. Asmussen, Pletcher, I'm sure a lot of big time guys will have quality horses running on opening day. Yeah, do you think we'll see any Tis the Bombs? Um, I don't know. I I don't. Is Tis the Bomb even run anymore? What happened to that horse? Uh, I think they're pointing for a four year old campaign at Turfway. At Turfway, yeah, that was that was the coda for sure. He'll run at Turfway twice, and then he'll run in the Pegasus World Cup dirt or turf. I'm putting it right here. <laughs> Just for some reason, he'll run in one of those two. I don't know which one. I, I would say turf because I'm expecting a Flight Line Life is Good rematch in the Pegasus. You know what's interesting about Life is Good? They haven't announced his retirement yet. Has that been announced like a stud fee or like where – I mean, obviously he's going to Winstar, I'm sure, so maybe there's no reason to announce it. But like I just saw Golden Pal's been announced, like Happy Saver's been announced. Like all these horses right. have been announced. But I don't know. Maybe they're just keeping in the back. I could be dead wrong. I might have missed it. But I haven't seen a Life is Good standing at Winstar for blank amount or anything like right. that yet. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because I actually have a theory. And Golden What's Pal the is Golden Pal is going to test this theory to the limit because I have found through the years, and I wish I would have graphed this from the start because it's anecdotal, admittedly. But when the announcement comes before the Breeders' Cup, I'm inclined to think less of that horse's chances because they're taking advantage of the optimism now to make the announcement. Whereas if you could announce after and say Breeders' Cup winner, Golden Pal, which he already has a Breeders' Cup win. But you know what I'm saying. Who? Right. Yeah, no, I don't I don't fully disagree with that logic. It is I, – I don't know how it all works in terms of like – I I kept bringing up Happy Saver. I saw – I forget what farm he's going to, but his fee's already set. I don't think they think Happy Saver's won in the Classic, but I think <laughs> it could be a – I don't know. Golden Pal has won two Breeders' Cups already, but it is an interesting logic because like you said, if – if let's say life is good or flight line, whoever wins, they can say Breeders' Cup Classic winner now standing at blank farm. Yeah. I don't know. It's an interesting point. Yeah. It's uh, I, I, it's done me okay through the years. Like one of those, I don't completely toss, obviously. Still handicap the race. But in the back of my head, looking at really short prices like Golden Pal, and all of a sudden it's like, well – maybe not a stone cold based on that. I don't know. It's just one of those things. I think through the years, we all kind of pick up our own pet angles. Uh, speaking of angles, uh, Keeneland, as I mentioned, will end Saturday back for the Breeders' Cup after three days at Churchill. But what have you seen this meet? Four days left, but so far, anything sticking in the back of your head as far as how this track's played, how jockeys are riding, trainers, what have you? that you're going to keep in mind, if not for the Breeders' Cup, maybe even the undercard races? I thought the track's actually been pretty fair this meet. It's been pretty simple. Like you, it, Well, sometimes it's seed fairing, but if you're in a mile and a 16th race short stretch, it's hard to make up ground. 
they haven't run many mile and an eighth races, but those have been fair when they have. I think they've have they run. I don't know this. You might know this. I think they've won one run one one turn or um mile race. So I think they've only had one of those. Could yeah, be wrong about kept that. It, kept it light. They're keeping it light for those dirt mile entries <laughs> in the Breeders' Cup. Um, no, I think it's been fair for all along. And the turf course has been when the paces have been slow, horses have wired, but there's also been horses at Keeneland that have shot from dead last, shot up the rail, shot up outside on the turf. I, honestly, I think it's been pretty fair for the most part. There's always that one or two, maybe a little speed favoring days at Keeneland, but that, that short stretch, especially when the mile to 16th races, it's pretty hard to pick up ground. I mean, it come, the wire comes up so fast. That's the only thing I wish at Keeneland. I almost wish the Breeders' Cup Juvenile race, the all the mile and a 16th races, so the Juvenile and the Philly Juvenile, I kind of wish they were a mile and an eighth races, to be honest, because that short stretch is pretty tough for any horses yeah, to make up. Yeah, the, uh, the Arlington Breeders' Cup, they did a mile and an eighth instead of, uh, I think at Arlington yeah. it would have been a short run if they had done a mile and a 16th. So there's some precedence, granted 20 years ago, to make it longer. But Keeneland runs so many of those short stretch races, uh, I mean, I get why they keep it at a mile and a 16th, but it, it is unique, uh, as is the dirt mile. And uh, the only thing I'll mention, I've you know tweeted this before, one turn dirt races at Keeneland, the rail has been terrible uh, over the long. Now, I also look back all the way to 2014 and the rail in six furlong races, not as bad as we've seen this meet. Uh, so that may be for the sprint, not as big a deal, but historically seven furlongs in particular. So Philly and mare sprint, the rail is abominable. So that is one, whoever draws the rail in the Philly and mare sprint automatic downgrade for me, no matter what. So uh, you don't want the rail. You don't want the outside uh, in those short stretch races going two turns. So those are the things I'll be keeping in mind. Last question for you before we get you out of here. We'll certainly talk more Breeders' Cup next week. But what is – how do you play the Breeders' Cup? Are you a pick five guy? Are you supers every race? What's sort of your your plan when you're actually playing? Um, I kind of I, I kind of pick my spots on the Breeders' Cup. I feel like if you just fire at every wager on the Breeders' Cup, it can get, it can get real dicey if you're not winning. So – yeah. If there's and even you know, when you are effort, winning, you can give it back really quick, really quickly. So if there's, I don't know how many pick fives they're going to offer on Saturday. Let's say they offer four pick fives. I usually try to play one or two that I really like and try to avoid betting them all as good as they look and as high as the pools are, and then stick to win bets with value. I'm not betting a win bet in the Breeders' Cup on a two to one shot. Unless it just can't, you know, it depends. Like if, you know, flight line, I keep seeing people like they want three to five on flight line. I'm not going to say who wants three to five, five on flight line so they can bet them to win. But I think it just Which depends I think on he'll be one the Breeders' five. Cup. You know, it's funny because life is good as such a good horse. And it's almost like everybody, can, they, they think he's like some claimer or something in this race. So there is a chance that flight line is like, and I don't know if that's because his Woodward wasn't like eye popping, but like. I'm seeing tweets. He might be the four choice now. He's clearly the second best horse. It's just the distance. I guess people are so worried. Yeah. About. Mm. But no, I just kind of try to pick my spots. There's so much value in the Breeders' Cup. If you can just be right once or twice, you can really make money in the Breeders' Cup. But there's also a lot of Breeders' Cup races because the best horses are running that can get, they can be very chalky for, because it's usually good horses. Like Cave Rock, for example, is going to be a super short price, probably hard to beat. Golden Pal, my, people think he's vulnerable, but I mean, he's going to be four to five, three to five. So there's a lot of flight line. There is a lot of races that could produce really, really short winners because they're just the best horse in the race. Yep. Well, we'll uh, certainly talk about that more next week. Uh, Pre entries today, Wednesday, entries Monday. When do you usually have your sheets out? Do you do like Tuesday for Friday, Wednesday for Saturday? Yeah. Tuesday for Friday, Wednesday for Saturday. Do they both come out on Monday or just the first day? No, Monday is the whole the whole boat. The whole car. Yeah, so it'll be Tuesday for Friday, Wednesday for Saturday. And then you still do Aqueduct for Friday and Saturday? Of course I still do Aqueduct because you have to bet something in between. In between. Yep. And Aqueduct actually has – the Aqueduct fall meet, I don't know if it's going to be as good as it has been in the past because – the whole box situation and it was at Belmont, but the aqueduct November meet is you literally usually the second best meet in New York every year. It's Saratoga than that meet. I mean, if you go back and look at the field quality for some reason, 
I don't know if it's because the opportunity for turf racing is that's kind of the end of it. Like Churchill doesn't run a lot, but in the past, the November meet at Aqueduct's been fantastic, and the Remsen and the Demoiselle last year, what they produced. So they have good races. Who was in the Demoiselle? Nest. It was Nest, and then the Remsen was Zandon and um, Mo Donegal. Nest beat. Um, I don't can't remember who Nest beat, but yeah, they produced. In there. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, good the, lineup. Ten to one, according to Ed. Ten to one, according. Rose yeah, Rose, she this depth. She she's my short price toss of of the races for sure. Um, you gotta take a stand somewhere, man. No, I agree. I, I I'm not gonna pick her if she's. You know, I mean, she's gonna be the morning line favorite. I'm sure. So it's gonna be a tough pill to swallow at eight to five, nine to five because I'm a figures guy. But I have that thing in the back of my head. She might sit third and just blow by everybody and win by six lengths. It's just I don't know. She's got that turn of foot. We'll just we'll see. But I agree with you. you got what's the horse's name from Woodbine that you love? Um, Mara. Yeah, she's got Frankie Dettori. I saw so you'll get some action in that race. Yeah. No. I, uh, that was uh, that was that was rough watching that race. Uh, the EP Taylor. Uh, she she just was. I mean, it was just incredible. You could see it coming from the start. Just. But I heard that, that was awaiting. Um, we've all seen races like that. So, yeah. Um, and, and admittedly, I did not bet her at, at that short of a price. I was hoping Chad Brown would would take some money in there and, and make more of a playable. So good. I'm glad it, it worked out that she wasn't. But uh, I'll, I'll be back in the Philly and Meritor. Yeah, this sure. is your chance. No war like goddess. She'll get some value on her. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, we'll talk next week. Next week should be fun. Biggest Breeders' week. Cup, and we'd be remiss. I don't know if you're a future wager player, but I love that Churchill added a pool after Stars of Tomorrow. So we'll get the Hot Maiden winners before Breeders' Cup. So you'll, you know, well, Cave Rock won't be a part of it anyway because he's trading by Baffert, but you won't get that sort of hammering the Breeders' Cup horse right in between 40 horses plus the field. I'm not saying I'm going to get involved, but I'm certainly going to take a look. I will definitely take a look. I, you you want to? You really want to know who I bet to win the Derby last year in my future pool? Tis the bomb. Way worse. Oh, worse. A man performance. <laughs> Wasn't he still a maiden? He was, and he was. I don't. He did break his maiden and mom with this past summer, so we are moving up the ladder. He is, uh, he's one of those horses that ha- always has the fast numbers and then finds a way to lose. Finds a way to that. So I don't know. I think that might be a little worse than Tis the Bomb, to be honest. Tis the Bomb's a little more accomplished. <laughs> the problem is, I actually bet Tis the Bomb on Derby Day. That, well, Yours I tried was, to tell you that was. Years was a future wager. Yeah, it's okay. I picked, um, I bet, what's the Baffert horse, Yak Teen horse, Messier. So you might have beat no. me to be. Yeah, where's he? He's training. He um he just got outworked by Taba. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, wow. No shame in that. No, no, not at all. But Taba is a good horse. Taba is a good horse, and I he honestly he might be the third choice in the Breeders' Cup ahead of Life Is Good. I really think there's a chance the way people are talking that Life Is Good is going to be the fourth choice. No, I'm shaping up that way. That would be my play. I mean, whoever. I don't like Epicenter, so if he's fourth choice, that won't matter to me. But if I don't if like Taba. Epicenter. Or life is good. Whichever is the longer of the two, that that's just where I would plant my flag and say if the other one beats me, that's fine. But I completely agree with you about Epicenter. I haven't seen the PP yet, but I even think Olympiad has a better chance than Epicenter. Mm. But we'll see. And Rich Strikes in the mix. He is. He's going to run fourth. He's going to run a 113 buyer, and he's going to be back again. <laughs> and <laughs> he'll silence the haters. He will silent. He's really a legit horse when he comes forth by 36 lengths, just like in the Travers. Uh, love it. Well, yeah, that's racing, so it makes it go around. All right, well, he's David. I'm Ed. Appreciate it, Prince. Uh, we'll dish next week. Looking forward to it.